Hey guys, how you doing? So in this video, we're going to learn about SEO and web marketing for 2024. So I'm recording this in 2024, but if you're watching this a few years from now, if I haven't updated it, it's still 100% good. In fact, most of the rules and the principles that I'm going to be teaching in this crash course have been relevant for many, many years now. Not much has changed. The web is pretty, uh, and the internet is pretty settled. Uh, the last big change when it comes to SEO and web marketing, SEO is short for search engine optimization. We'll get into that in a second. The last big change in that regard was when the social media became dominant. Then that shifted the way the search engines, basically Google, uh, adjusted their algorithms in terms of evaluating uh, what sites should be displayed and what sites shouldn't be displayed. Anyway, that all said and done, we're going to jump into it. We're going to learn about 10 or so principles and techniques. And uh, yeah, by the end of this course, this crash course, you will be comfortable with SEO and web marketing and you'll be able to integrate it into your own workflows. So what exactly is SEO and web marketing? So SEO is short for search engine optimization. And that is the process traditionally of cleaning up the code in the site, the structure of the site and the content in the site. In the early days of the web, when search engines started rising, I say late 90s, the way we built websites was not very friendly towards the search engines, meaning the way that the sites were built, the search engines weren't able to figure out what the site was about. So you would have SEO experts who would come in and they would restructure the code to make it readable as far as the search engines. Now, that practice is not nearly as relevant as it was then today, simply because with the advent of HTML5 uh, and web de designers and developers became much more sophisticated in terms of their understanding of how to build pages and build sites, that is pretty much automatic. So if you've learned HTML5 from any decent foundation course, you already build your sites that are very readable by the search engine. So I wouldn't be too concerned about that. The only little caveat, you should understand things like semantic tags. These are tags that describe what's in the page. So you might have uh, the article tag, you have the main tag, you have the footer tag, the head tag, et cetera, and so on. If you understand the basics of these semantic tags, there's a few others aside, et cetera, um, that tells the search engine what's in the page and what parts of the page are what. So again, any beginner's course on HTML5 will teach you all this, so I'm not going to go into the details here. The other aspect of SEO was, of course, the content. What, what a good SEO expert would do, would, they would look at what niche you are in or what business you are in or what the site is about. So let's say, for example, you are about gourmet coffees and coffee equipment and how to make coffees and you want to sell coffee uh, brews and you want to sell machinery, or maybe, et cetera, or courses, I don't know. So what the SEO expert would do, they would go to Google Trends or some similar type of site and figure out what keywords and key phrases people were using to search for coffee, what was popular, right? So if, for example, you wrote articles on your coffee-related site about types of coffee nobody cared about or machinery nobody cared about, you're not gonna get much traffic. traffic. So the good SEO expert would study your domain, figure out what people are searching for, and then would uh, come up with a content strategy uh, so and realign some of the words in your pages as, in your site as well to align with what people are interested in, right? So that was SEO. It was fixing up problems of old sites, in both in terms of the content and the tag structure and so on. Now. As I said, with modern HTML5, you don't have to really do the tag cleanup anymore. Also, search engines back in those days weren't very good. Today, search engines, search engines are far more powerful and they're able to read uh, sites pretty easily. That all said, what you write in the page sets the category in which you fall to a certain extent, meaning you write about coffee and exotic coffees from Brazil. When somebody searches for that, if you do, if your copy reflects that, if the material in your site reflects that, then there's a better chance that you're going to rank higher in the search engine results. 
That all said, the search engines pay attention to not only what's in your site to rank it and position it, but they also pay attention, the search engines pay attention to what other sites are saying about your site and what the social media uh, landscape is saying about your site. So that's SEO, a brief explanation. Then you have uh, the marketing end of things, the web marketing. That can come down to paid ads. It can come down to social media content production and content production on your own site. We'll get into that a little bit as we jump deeper into this uh, crash course. All right, so Google Trends. Google Trends is where I would go to see what people are interested in in your particular niche. So going back to the exotic coffee uh, website, you go into Google Trends, you start searching for different things related to coffee. It could be coffee makers, uh, French presses, uh, you know, vanilla coffee, hazelnut coffee, whatever it is, you start mining Google to figure out what people are actually interested in in terms of coffee. So Google Trends is a good place to check because it's going to show you what the search engine interest is relative to each other. So you may find, as an example, lots of people are searching for Brazilian exotic coffees and nobody's searching for Canadian exotic coffees. I don't know if there's Canadian exotic coffees, but you get the point. So by searching this, it helps you to figure out what type of content you're going to build for your site and the keywords and phrases that you would use throughout your site. So Google Trends is one place. Another place you can go is, of course, uh, the social media sites. You can start searching social media, see what's popular there. For example, on YouTube, you may check out what videos are really getting a lot of views based on the subject in the niche. So there's a bit of work for you to do in terms of uh, marketing, in terms of just seeing what the market is telling you about what's popular or what's not popular. And that will play heavily into how you build out the site and how you build out its content so you get an audience for, uh, for your site. So what you're gonna see is that new content, fresh content that's frequently updated on a site will push you up higher in the rankings. The search engines, eh, Bing and Google, but it's mostly Google. Uh, the search engines pay attention to new content. It likes to show new relevant content. It doesn't like to show content that's months old, years old. So the more often that a site is updated and there's new content put out related to your site, uh, the better off you're going to be, the more visible your site is going to be. And it just makes basic sense, right? It's basic psychology. If somebody's talking all the time and you're getting, and, and this individual's getting your attention or if this business is getting your attention, you're going to pay more attention. As I suggested, social media plays a huge role in terms of how well your site will rank in the search engines. What Google does, and I'm sure Bing does, and I don't know, DuckDuckGo does, they look at what's going on there in terms of social media. So if you have your coffee site and you know only 10 people talk about it on Facebook and only five people on Instagram, it's not going to get you too much. But if another coffee site has a thousand people talking about it on Facebook and a thousand people talking about it on Instagram, the search engines will see that the site is more important and that will affect your rank in a heavy way as well. Again, if your coffee site is mentioned quite a bit in a coffee, a coffee lover's Facebook group, that will uh, help determine your ranking to a certain extent because the, the search engines will see, oh, look, this Facebook group on coffee is talking about this site here. Oh, it's also about coffee. Okay, so this is a very coffee-oriented site. You want to make sure in your web marketing strategy that the uh, content or surrounding your site, regarding your site, is consistent with the traffic that you want to bring in. Meaning, if you want to bring in people who are interested in coffee, make sure that the social media sites are talking about you, are talking about you in terms of coffee. One aspect about the social media marketing plan and a website, you have to figure out and choose what social media platforms are best for the type of content that you're delivering. So for example, if you're if you want to use social media to promote your coffee site, I would argue you're probably better off on TikTok or Instagram, because it's very visual, it's that type of content, rather than Twitter or X. 
On the other hand, if you are a finance site and you're talking about finance and investing, you're probably going to do better, I would argue, on X. Don't forget YouTube, of course, because of the nature of the audience. You have to figure, you got to look at these social media sites as like nightclubs. Certain nightclubs will appeal to, like, though, I don't know, jazz nightclub versus uh, heavy metal nightclub. So if you want to attract people who are interested in jazz, you want to get a presence on the jazz nightclub. So for example, if you, are, again, you have a coffee, sh a coffee shop, you probably want to get on uh, Instagram, TikTok, uh, Pinterest, you know, sites that are catered to that type of crowd that would be interested in your, uh, in your coffee uh, content. Thanks for watching the intro to the crash course on SEO and web marketing. If you want to find the whole course, it's included in my Uncle Steph mentoring program, where not only will you learn the foundations of coding and how to start a freelance career, how to start a career as a professional developer, coder, and so much more, you'll get the whole SEO web marketing crash course. It's all included in the mentoring program at unclesteph.com. All right, cheers. Thank you.